last class we were only classifying aromatic or not aromatic. Now I am saying when it's not aromatic, it could be anti-aromatic or it could be non-aromatic. For it okay. to be non-aromatic, it has to violate those two, the first two rules of aromatic? Huh? Any? What? Any? Oh, so you can be non-aromatic, but not necessarily be anti-aromatic? Excuse me? Because <laughs> <laughs> you said non-aromatic violates any of those rules, right? No, I did not say that. I said it violates one of the last three. One of the last three? Yeah. Guys, what's the problem? This is called anti-aromatic, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. So it will look aromatic, but it will not have the 4 n plus 2 pi. This non-aromatic, <coughs> what is that? Not so. Is that anti-aromatic? No. 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 This is non-aromatic because it's not cyclic. It violates one of the three in the bottom. It's not aromatic if it violates this plane or rule. And it's not aromatic if it's not conjugate. Okay? They're called the non-aromatic. The other one is anti-aromatic. These three are fulfilled, except it's not 4n plus 2. Mm -hmm. It's just 4n. Okay? Now, last class we were doing uh, 1 with 8, yes? That. What do you classify that as? <coughs> said that a little weird. So, is this, and if I don't tell you, it's always planar, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, is this planar? Yes. yes. As far as you know, it's planar, yes? Because mm -hmm. I'm not telling you it's not. And I don't really care if it's not. <laughs> okay, but it is planar, and it is conjugate. Mm -hmm. And it is cyclic. cyclic. So, yeah. so far, all these rules apply. Yeah. And does this rule apply? Yeah. Is it 4n plus 2 pi? Yeah. Four, no. Six, eight, Numbers eight, for 4n 2 pi are 2, two 6, six eight, 10, 10, 10 14, 14, 18. 18. Yeah. Very good. So, this has how much? 8. That has 4n pi electrons. Yeah. Because this has 4 and pi electrons, this is called anti-aromatic. Okay. Very simple. Now, there is something called an anulene. An anulene is a way of saying a ring, okay, with double bonds all over the place. And if it is 6 annually, this is, is benzene. Okay? So, 6 annually. This number here in the brackets indicates the number of carbons in the ring. So, how many is that? 6. And with conjugated double bonds all over the place, is that aromatic, yes or no? Yes, mm -hmm. yes it is. Is 8 anulene aromatic? Yes or no? No. 8 anulene is which one? Yes. Okay. 8 anulene is this one. How about 10 anulene? Is it aromatic? Yes. aromatic? yes. Why don't you try to draw it? 10? Yes. 10 anulene. They might be difficult to draw since you have so many carbons, yes? But you try it, okay? I know La Viste will be incapable of doing this little drawing. There's no way you can do it. Tell me the truth. You haven't even started, have you? No. You already made some chicken scratch.
Second class is later. Don't worry, okay? I don't try to memorize who's late. It just happens that way. So, 10 annually. It's a what? Look, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't draw. <laughs> okay? I'm related to La Vista. So, this is what I'm going to do, okay? I can't draw it. I'm serious. So, that's what I'm going to do. How many is that so far? Five. Six. That's six, yes? Yeah. So I'm going to imagine. How many is that? Ten. Ten, okay. If you drew it another way, that's okay. Okay, I just can't draw it that other way. Okay. So if we put double bonds here, okay. So let's say we put a double bond here, we put a double bond here, put one here. Is that okay? Are those conjugate? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. How many does it have? How many? First of all, I don't tell you, yes? It's a planar. Yes. Yes. Uh, is it cyclic? Cyclic, yes. 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 Uh, it's conjugated. Is it conjugated? Yes. yes. Is it 4n plus 2 pi? Yes. 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 So a 4n yes. plus 2 pi has to be 6, 10, 10 14, 14, 18. 18. Yes. Yeah. So 2, 4, 6, mm -hmm. 8, 10. 10. That's 10 pi electrons. Yep. That is a Google rule number. So it's aromatic. So, what would you say? You would say that's aromatic, okay? But you would be wrong because look here. This has a hydrogen here and it has another hydrogen there. You can see how difficult that was to draw in there, yes? So what happens is because these two hydrogens are very close in proximity, steric effects oh. do not allow this to be planar. So this is not planar. Wow. Because it is not planar than what is it? Anti non or non? It is non aromatic. That's right. Wow. If I did not give you that, would you be able to tell whether this was not aromatic or not? No. no. You have no way. Nobody knew until they started doing experiments and then they went, oh, this is not aromatic. So if it's not aromatic, then it behaves as a normal what? These double bonds behave as a normal double, double bond. bond. It behaves as a normal <laughs> on key. Because a benzene ring, because it is more stable than a normal double bond, does not behave like a normal double bond, yes? I mean, last class I was a little shallow on this, yes? Under normal conditions, normal conditions, the ones that you did on key reduction, okay? Under normal conditions, this reaction is very, very slow. Under normal conditions. In order for this to occur, you have to apply a lot of pressure and a lot of heat for you to be able to reduce this to, see, to this. Yeah, to that cyclohexane, okay? This reaction is not very good. It's very, very <coughs> slow because the benzene ring is very stable. stable. Okay. So if you had this and you use the same reaction but under mild conditions, let's say, you know, let's say one ATM of this H2, okay, what would be reduced first? Okay, the double bond. So one would be reduced first, and all you would get is this. Yes, somebody had a question back there? Yeah, but can, can you reduce it using the Burks or no? Like, can you, like, reduce it and add some benzene or no? Yeah, but Birch does not give you a reduction of the whole ring. Birch gives you two double bonds. So, so benzene cannot be reduced 
It can. You're not. <laughs> it can. It can. But under a lot of pressure on temperature. So for this to occur this way, you need, let's say, 200 ATMs of pressure of H2 and 350 degrees Celsius for that to happen. Okay? But under normal condition, low pressure, okay, and not a lot of heat, okay, you can go from here to there easily. Okay? So the double bonds inside the ring are not regular alkenes, okay? As far as this reaction is concerned. Hello? Right. So, 10 annually. is what? Non-aromatic. Non How about 14 annually? Don't even try to draw it, but it is non-aromatic. Because of the same effect, okay? There are problems and it has to be bent out of shape. 18 annually is aromatic. Because I am telling you, <laughs> there is no way for you to know unless I tell you. There is no way for me to know unless somebody else told me. And that somebody else somebody was else. a book or a professor that said it I don't know how many years ago. Or maybe I read it yesterday. <laughs> Did you read the book yesterday? So if the student doesn't read the book, how can you expect the professor to read the book? <laughs> That's why sometimes you guys want better professors, but if you don't read the book yourself, you can expect the same from your professor. So, 14 annual leave is? No. Not, not aromatic. Because it is not? Later. later. That's what you have to write down. And I told you before, if I don't tell you, then it is what, I, what you expect. But if I tell you, 10 annulin is? Non aromatic. Non -aromatic. 14 annulin is? Because they are not planar because of steric effects. That's it. That's all you have to know. How would you know? Because you memorized it. Now we can have other aromatic systems like this. And sometimes they're drawn like this, yes? And <coughs> I want you to place the dough bonds in there, see how that looks like. It's like two benzenes fused together, it's called naphthalene. SP2. This one? SP2. 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 Everybody's SP2. So, 
This is going all over the place. Okay. Now those are aromatic. And you can have some that look like this. That was called the naphthalene anthracene. We talked about what aniline is or no? Aniline? No. No. No, we didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about any of those common names? No. Mm -hmm. Phenol, no? No. Yeah. Phenol, yeah. We talk about phenol. You went over some of the groups. Yeah. Benzoic yeah. acid, benzoaldehyde, and all that stuff. I mean, that's kind of besides the point, but let's do some of those. Well, they're in the book. <laughs> <laughs> this is called aniline, yes? This is benzaldehyde. Some of these you have seen before. Yeah. yeah. This is called benzoic Don't acid. acid. Yeah. These are common names, yes? Yeah, phenol. What else? Okay, that's fine, whatever. Let's do something called a frost circle. Frost circle is a way of finding out whether something is aromatic or anti-aromatic based on molecular orbitals. Okay? Now the frost circle gives you the molecular orbitals. So what you do is you draw a circle and you cut the circle in half. Okay? Inside of that circle, you are going to draw the ring that you have. You are going to put one of the vertices pointing down here at the bottom. So if it is, let's say, benzene, can you draw it like this? Can you draw the benzene like that? That's not a problem. Can you draw like that? No. One of the tips has to be on the bottom. Okay? So you have to draw it the way we have been drawing. Oh, uh, it's, okay. it's kind of difficult to draw sometimes, okay? Because you gotta worry about a circle one. If you have problems like La Vista here, there is absolutely no way he can draw a benzene ring inside of that circle. He can draw a benzene ring and then the circle outside. <laughs> but not that inside the circle. <laughs> How do I know? Because I can't draw it either. But let's try. There you go. That way, and then you go up, and then this way. Look. I just messed that up. So let's draw the benzene ring and then the circle. Where's <laughs> <laughs> la vista? I'm telling you, I got issues. <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, it's easy for people that can do it. For people that can't do it, it's very difficult. For me, this is nearly impossible. So, the only way is 
<laughs> if you give me a circle with little dots all over the place, I may be able to do it. So here's a benzene ring. One of these points down, yes? And what you are going to do is, you are going to, every time you see one of these vertices, you are going to draw a line that is a molecular orbit. There is another tip there, another molecular orbital, another molecular orbital, one there, one here, one there. How many molecular orbitals does that seem to have? Six, Six of them, okay? The electrons are going to go inside of those molecular orbitals. Now, the drawing here is this here, the line in the middle of the circle is called non-bonding. Okay, non-bonding, and these are bonding molecular orbitals, and these here are called antibonding. <clears throat> if all the electrons you draw are in the bonding, it will be aromatic. Okay? So this is what we have. Let's draw the lines. This is for benzene, yes? Non-bonding is right smack in the middle. So below that they are bonding, yes? These are bonding. And in the bonding, you have how many electrons from the double bonds in there? Six, yes? And I am going to place them here. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> All of them are in the bonding, so it is called aromatic. What's important to me that you learn from here is how to draw this, what is it called? Cross, 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 cross circle. circle. Okay. Now I know this may be difficult for some of us. Okay. So on the test, if I give you something like this, I will maybe draw the circle and maybe draw the things inside the circle for you just put the lines, okay? Yes? Mm -hmm. Do it for the one that is eight. So do it for eight annually. Yeah, I have a question. I have a question. How come you decided to put it? Because I don't really, I, when I read it, I didn't understand. Why are you putting all the, the double bonds under the bonding instead of... I'm not putting them under for any specific reason. There is three lines because the middle is right here. Right. There's three lines on the bottom. I got to put the electrons... No, no, no. I know, but the double bonds. How come you decided to put all the six of them? Because it seems like that double bond is on the non-bonding. Part. Like if I were to cut that in half, that bond on the top is above. Because these are molecular orbitals. This is not what you see with your eyes. So, okay, so you mean to say that I'm say supposed it? because this is up here, I'm supposed to place them here? No. Uh, you are talking about molecular orbitals, and that's a representation of how to get to the molecular orbitals. Mm. The reason why these are like this is called quantum physics. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for our purpose, do we have to start from the bottom? Like, let's say, like, if let's say there's eight. Can you, yeah, you start it all the time. You start from the bottom, fill them as you go up. You count them all, and you try to put them in the bottom. And they all put in the bottom, and it's aromatic. And if they don't, then it's non-aromatic. So, <laughs> but, right? No? So what if it was eight? Could be anti-aromatic. It could be anti-aromatic. If it was A and it wouldn't have to all. Okay, I, I asked you, maybe you should try it. Try it. <laughs> I know, I, I, just, I just. You just understood it now, but that's okay, but try it. All you have to do is inscribe. Is it called inscribed? Inscribe the ring inside the circle. And yes, you cut the circle in half. I have a problem. When I put stuff inside the circle, I don't know what half of the circle is. So La Vista's got friends in this classroom, huh?
Ate too many carpets? Is that eight? But I can't draw it like this, yes? I gotta put one of these tips going down. Yeah. So here's one. Yes? Mm -hmm. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. <coughs> now, of course, if you look at my little drawing, which one is halfway of this? The one in the middle? The middle. Where is the middle at? The middle yeah. is actually right here. there. Yeah. Okay. You can see that that stuff, even though this is smaller than that, yeah. That stuff is on the top. And this is on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, how many do you have? You have this molecular orbital, and you have this molecular orbital oh. in the non-bonding. Non-bonding. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have it in the non-bonding. How many are we supposed to have for this eight? How many pi electrons? Eight. Eight. How many pi electrons? Eight. 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 Why is that confusing? So, <laughs> one, two, two three, three, four, five, six. And then? Non-bonded. And then seven, eight. Seven, eight. eight. Oh, that's how you do it. Okay. When do you have to draw a circle? Are you in the circle? I didn't draw the circle. I already established before that I can't draw the circle. So what's the point, what's the point of doing the circle? So it looks symmetrical. But I can't draw it symmetrical. And I can't even draw the circle. I already tried. Okay, and then you twist it. But then you said you need a point at the bottom, right? It cannot end on a flat. Yes, it cannot end on a flat. Here's the point. Yes? Yeah. Okay. I did everything on top of the same one, okay? Mm -hmm. So, what this is, it has two in the non-bonding. This is not aromatic, yes? Right. It's not aromatic. Nice. If I give you any, any of these frost circle things, I will draw maybe on the test three or four of these circles for you to choose which one it is. Okay? Yes? So I will draw them for you. You can choose which one it is and fill in the blank. Okay? It's not, I'm not going to draw it. I'm going to write it in the computer. Or I'm going to take a picture from somewhere. Would this be known as anti-aromatic or is this known as That's anti-aromatic. How do you know it's anti-aromatic? If you mix it up, because it's eight because it's the four N. It's anti-aromatic because it's four N, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't we talk about this one already? Yeah.
Did you say what's the point? <laughs> that you need a point? There's no point. The point is I give it to you, you just gotta learn. Okay, so let's just say that there's like more like there's two high electrons on the antibody, so what does that mean? It's non aromatic? Like, it could be non aromatic, yeah. Because if it's not a if it's not a ring, then you wouldn't do that, right? If it's not a ring, can you do the frog circle thing? So now the non aromatic guys, all you have to learn from here is and you listen carefully, okay? If it is below the electrons are below this, it is called the aromatic. Okay? You don't need anything else. You don't need to know what if there's an electron here, what's that called? What if one is here? Is there an example in which there is one here, one there, one there? What's this one called? This is called Psi 1, this is called Psi 2, or Psi A, Psi B, and this is called anti... Who cares, right? If you want me to explain it, then I will test you on it, right? Which means whenever it's over 6 electrons, is that our body? What? No. What? And if it's over 6 electrons. 6 electrons, is that our body? No. No, guys, no. Is, that, is that what that says? No. No. You know that 18 is aromatic, yes? Yep. Right. I mean by the circle. Oh, by the circle. But then the problem is that the circle changes depending on how many vertices you have. So if you have more, sometimes these will land below it. Mm -hmm. Guys, frost circle. Describe the thing in it. <laughs> if it's below no bonding, it's called aromatic. aromatic. That's it. Don't find the answer to life yet. Okay. Finish the course and then ask somebody else for that. Okay. <laughs> ask your philosophy professor what the answer to life is. The answer to life is you're going to die and I'm going to meet you in hell and I will do this every day. <laughs> We have things like this. Is that aromatic, yes or no? Yes. 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 Now, is this lone pair part outside. of the No, it's outside of it. It's outside. not part of the aromatic yeah. system. The nitrogen is like this. There is an orbital like that. Yes? Mm -hmm. And they're like this. And the two electrons, I mean, the electrons are going like that. The lone pair is here. So it's not part of it. It's not part of the aromatic system. No, it is not. Okay. This lone pair is not, yes? This lone pair is not part of the aromatic system. Mm -hmm. This lone pair is outside. As a result of being outside, this lone pair is basic. Okay. This means that this can act as a base because this lone pair is a base. Electrons, yes? So, what is this called? The hetero... Yeah, it is hetero, but it's, uh, what's the name of this? Pyridine? Yeah, pyridine. 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 Nobody, nobody be reading the book. Because pyro. 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 Yeah, pyro. Pyro. Uh, not pyro, okay? You're crazy. Oh, no, the one, the pyro, the one, the one is inside. I guess. The, the lone pair, sorry, is inside. Okay, guys, whatever. <laughs> Yes, 
Is this aromatic, yes or no? Yes. 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 It is aromatic. Are these two electrons part of the aromatic yes. system? Yes. 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 Now, are those two electrons basic? No. no. They are not basic. Okay. Because they are part of the aromatic system, they are doing something else. It will not act like a base. So this is not very basic. While this is very basic, because these are outside. Outside. Good. Okay. You you make sure you write that down. Okay. I don't know if I did this reaction in organic water or not. But did we do oxidation of a chain on a benzene ring? So let's say. Chrome, uh, yeah. Okay. Chromic. You can use chromic acid or you can use potassium, potassium permanganate. permanganate. Okay. You can use either one of them. So, chromic acid. What is it? Is that CR2? O7 or O7? O7. O5, O4. O5, O4. Okay. KMnO4, sodium hydroxide, whatever. Uh, chromic acid, I mean, chromic acid is made from sodium dichromate, yes? And the sulfuric acid. Here, this is oxidation conditions, yes? Mm -hmm. You can oxidize no matter how long that chain is, it's going to cut it and make a carboxylic acid. acid there at the end. Yeah. Okay. It is going to do the same reaction as if you have a secondary. I did this before, no? Yes. If it is secondary, you can oxidize it once again to this. But if it has no protons here, it will not get oxidized. So if it is tertiary here, With potassium permanganate, okay? The same reaction. There is no reaction. We did this before or no? No, no, no. It's not alcohol. It's alcohol. When you did the secondary? It's not an alcohol. That's what I'm saying. Because it's secondary yeah. and it was a, a ketone, right? Sometimes. Are you sure we didn't do that? Mm. Mm. Because from secondary we get ketone, right? Yeah. Is it, is it always going to do that, the benzoic position? Like, if you have <coughs> the next part of it? Yeah. Like, uh, it, it, was, it was a primary yeah. 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 All of these here, it doesn't matter how long the chain is. All it matters is this carbon here, this in the benzylic position, this alpha to this benzene ring. If it has hydrogens, it will be oxidized by either chromic acid or potassium permanganate too. They all are the same. So it doesn't really matter if you have five or ten. They're going to get cut, okay. okay? The benzylic position. If it has no alpha hydrogens like this one, if it has no hydrogens here in the benzylic position, there will be no reaction. It will always be uh, benzoic acid. Like for the second one, it doesn't make a ketone, right? It just makes... No, I'm saying benzoic acid. Benzoic acid. Okay, you can do another reaction 
in which you can treat this with NBS and bromosuccinamide and a radical initiator like a peroxide. And this is going to give you, <coughs> instead of allylic bromination, it's going to give you benzylic bromination. No, it's not like that. Okay, the bromination will occur on the benzylic position. Yes? Mm -hmm. If I have this benzylic position and I treat this with something like sodium hydroxide and some type of solvent, it doesn't matter which solvent you use, SN1 or SN2, it's going to take place and what's going to happen? The, the bromine is going to leave. There is going to be SN1 or uh -huh. SN2. Two, yeah. And what oh, you are going to have is uh, an alcohol. alcohol there. If you treat it with uh, CN minus, what are you going to have? CN. The CN in that yeah. position. It's going to be if you SN2. treat it with any nucleophile, you can do SN1 or SN2 there. Yeah. Okay? Now, does it make a difference if it's SN1 or SN2? No. no. It does not make a difference as far as the end product is concerned. It will be substitution. Now, of course, this carbocation, if this were to leave here, this carbocation will be benzylic. Very stable, yes? Mm -hmm. But the attack will still make the same product as an SN1. Okay? Uh, SN2. Yes or no? Yes. yes. But if it wasn't NBS to the broad side, then it would be an allylic substitution instead of benzylic? Can't can be allylic. There is no... Allylic is this, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So why do you say it would be a... Oh, no. Because you only have a substitution. What? Uh, You're confusing me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, benzylic. Allylic is that, yes? Mm -hmm. What else can I do to this now? Can I oxidize this to something? Yes. I can oxidize this to an aldehyde. I can oxidize this to a car a carboxylic acid. acid. Yes? Yeah. I mean, there is no need to go through all the hassle if you are going to make this a carboxylic acid, yes or no? Because if you wanted to make this a carboxylic acid, you would not do this and this. If you wanted to make this a carboxylic acid, you just treat this with? Chromic. Chromic. Chromic acid. With chromic acid or potassium permanganate. So if you treated this with PCC, what would you get? Aldehyde. An aldehyde. Okay. You guys like uh, retrosynthesis, yes? Yes. No. <laughs> I should want it the birch reduction. In a in organic one? Yeah, but without the well, alcohol. Well, it acts the same so way, but it's just. No, yeah, fine, without the alcohol, but. Yeah, trans alkene. 
Okay, so this reaction is we had before sodium and ammonia, yes? And from a triple bond, we got transoxy. And what was the sodium do? Electron. The sodium was donating electrons, electrons right? It was donating electrons to this triple bond. And then it was forming this. Uh, on one side, you have an electron pair, which is a negative charge. And on the other side, you have a radical. This is exactly the same thing that happens here. Okay. The sodium is going to give an electron, and when it gives an electron, what is going to happen? The electron will react with one of these two, okay? and there will be two electrons on one side, and there will be one electron. an electron on the other side. Yeah. This two will be negatively charged, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That will be negatively charged. Negatively charged will be basic. basic. And what is a basic thing going to do? It is going to pull a proton from somewhere. Okay? Now, there will be here, there will be some resonance structures to this. The end result of the birch reduction will always be that type. Now the reason why this is that type of double bond is it's not conjugated, yes? Mm -mm. The reason for that is because the negative charge is going to be here, mm -hmm. while the radical that was here at first will do some resonance structure and will land here. Yeah, okay. okay? Mm. And then this is going to abstract the proton and then another sodium is going to give another radical to this. Add another radical, another electron, and this will pull it from some, something else. This is going to be the base, and this is going to be the acid. Okay? Here's what you have. Sodium has one electron. That's a radical, yes? Mm -hmm. One electron. Another electron is going to go there. I have to put where this double bond is going to go, yes? Mm -hmm. So uh, I can choose to make the negative charge here or here. Does it matter? Mm -hmm. I put the, these, two, these two electrons here, one from here and one from there. Where am I going to put the negative charge, here or here? On top. You want to put the negative charge here on the top? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't you know matter. Saying? Yeah. Okay. So if from this double bond, one electron was used to make that, the other one will go there. Mm -hmm. Yes? One double bond will go there, the other electron is going to go there. Okay. I'm going to draw a six member ring again. And that's on the top. Yes? Mm -hmm. Here we have a radical. Now, how good do you think that is? With a radical right next to this. Not, good. not, not, not good. very stable. There is a better resonance structure to this. Resonance structure will look like this. 
that is going to make a double bond. A like double this. bond there. Uh -huh. So this electron and one of these electrons is going to make a double down. bond there. Yeah. What? And then yeah, the this. other one is going to go there. It's a negative charge. <coughs> and here's a radical. And these happen to be both allylic. Yes? These happen to be allylic to both of these double bonds. So what's going to happen next is there is going to be an acid nearby, which is the alcohol. That's why you need it. And the base is going to pull that proton off. This is now a two-headed arrow. Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The oxygen will take the electrons from there, even though I didn't draw the electron pairs, yes? That's that hydrogen. Did that have a hydrogen from before? Was there a hydrogen here? Yes. There is a hydrogen here. There is a hydrogen there. Mm -hmm. There is a hydrogen here, and now there is another hydrogen. So that has two hydrogens, I just drew one. Okay, you finish the mechanism. Same thing, yes? Mm -hmm. like this arrow has how many heads? Two, two heads, because single-headed arrow means uh, radical. One electron. Yeah. This is two of them. Two of them yeah. <clears throat> substitution on this and the substitution is methyl. We have to start getting into the idea of something called electron donate and electron withdrawing. Okay? Electron withdrawing is something that pulls the electron density mm -hmm. and electron donating is something that provides right. yeah. electron density. If you have an alkyl group that is electron donate. 
okay? Because of resonance. Which one has a higher electronegativity, carbon or hydrogen? Carbon. Carbon. Carbon, carbon. carbon has carbon. a higher electronegativity. Yeah. And meaning that this methyl is going to look like that, yes? Mm -hmm. So overall, this CH3 will be electron releasing. Okay. Whenever you have that, what you get from the virtue reduction is, I got to put the methyl group, where am I going to put? Put it on the top or put it on the double bond? It always goes on the double bond. If it is electron release, if it is electron withdrawing, it does not go on the dual bond. It goes in the sp3. Oh, shit. So this is Electron withdrawing. Electron withdrawing is most of the time a group that has an element followed by a more electronegative element or a group that has an element followed by a pi bond. Okay? So, how about this? Is that electron withdrawn or is that electron releasing? Electron Here's an element. What do you have next to it? Oxygen. Another electronegative electron element. element. Yeah. Or what do you have next to it? Our, uh, pi bond. Okay? Those are electron withdrawing. Okay, this oxygen here will have what type of delta? Partial, partial negative. negative. Partial negative. This will make this partial positive, partial positive and in need of? Uh, electrons. electrons, yes. Yeah. So it is withdrawing it from the ring. Mm -hmm. How about this? Would this be withdrawing or releasing if it were on the ring? Withdrawing or releasing? Withdrawing. Withdrawing. Once again, element. What's next to it? Electronegative. Yeah. So this fluorine is pulling it the electron density that way. Mm -hmm. So this will be positive. This is severely positive, okay? And whenever you have that, what you get from the birch reduction is okay, it's going to be like that. I have chosen to draw them on different places so you don't think, oh, the CH3 goes on the top all the time. Be on the bottom, could be on the side, could be wherever. The idea is, and I haven't told you which one is your electron withdrawing and releasing yet, but I have explained some of them. Mm -hmm. So, electron releasing, if it is electron releasing or electron donating, what does this say? Does that say donating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donating. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. So, and we are going to use that same idea when we do electrophilic aromatic substitution because we have only scratched the surface, yes? So I'm going to tell you, this group here, uh, what type of group is that? Electron donating or electron release? Electron donating or electron releasing? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, electron donating and electron releasing is the same, yes? Very good. So, no, there was no question.
<laughs> this group here is electron, let's say it's on the ring, yes? This group there is electron donating. That group is electron releasing. Okay? And it's electron donating by resonance. Because, I mean, can you tell this is what type of charge here? Negative. Negative, yes? Mm -hmm. In the other one, the one on the ring was what? Positive. Positive, yes? This one is negative. So this is also electron donating or electron releasing <coughs> by Resonance. Resonance, meaning that if I ever develop a plus here, what's going to happen? The electron pair is going to go to make a double bond there and stabilize that. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to do it slowly. Don't worry. Okay? So far, that is electron what? Releasing. Releasing. Donating. Electron donating, electron releasing. Very good. How about this? Electron donating or electron releasing? Donating. Donating. The same thing, yes? Yeah. If it has electrons here, it will be electron release. Electron withdrawing is when you have an element with what next to it? Electron negative element. So, how about this? Electron withdrawing or electron release? I just told you because it has a whole bunch of electrons on it by resonance. Right? It's being what? It's being so nice, it has too many electrons. Yeah. How about this? Electron withdrawing you. What is that? Releasing or withdrawing? Very good, releasing, you can't stretch. <laughs> releasing because? Because it has a two lone pairs right there, it's not difficult. It has a two lone pairs, so what is it going to do? It's going to give them away. Because she got it, she wants to give them away. Okay, and of course, the benzene ring gonna take it. <laughs> How about this? about that? Withdrawing. This is withdrawing. You don't have to know the structure, you don't have to see it. All you have to know is, here's an element. Partially positive. Uh, electronegative. Negative. Negative. Yeah. So, what is happening is, since this is the most electronegative, this is going to be delta negative. minus, while well, this will be delta the positive. plus. So, this is electron withdrawing. withdrawing. You already see that if it's a carbonyl, it will be electron withdrawing. withdrawing. If it's a CF3 or C, withdrawing. any halogen will be electron withdrawing. 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 Hmm? Withdrawing. Electron withdrawing. One of the most electron withdrawing things known to man, or maybe the most. It is so electron withdrawing, it may even have a positive charge. Mm. Okay. Sodium, ammonia, and then, that's what you remember, yes? The sodium will add to this to reduce it. Sodium, ammonia, and then we need a base, I mean an acid somewhere. Most of the time an alcohol, okay? Since that's my favorite alcohol. 
ethanol. Drinking alcohol, that's the one we use, yes. Can you use another alcohol? Yeah. yeah. You can use methanol, you can use, you use whatever you want. But we like drinking, yes? So that's the one we're gonna use. I'm not doing it, you are. Guys, how much time do we have left? 25. We got two. How much did you say? Um, some of the, like when I was filming on that side, I don't know if the glare from the light is going to kind of like have it like, you know, I don't know if it's going to show different on the thing. You got to sit there next time. Okay. All right. But that means you got to come early. All right. I got you. Or you got to tell this young lady. Say me see. I did today. But I need to go in the middle next time. Because right here, that light, the reflection, I don't know if, I don't know how it's going to show. Yeah. Yeah, like in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, if, if, if the video gives you seizures, that's not my problem, okay? No, it, it won't have seizures. It won't have seizures? No, nah, not this time. Because I remember what you told me. Make sure I have, like, the metal thing showing so it could focus, you know, you know what I mean? It's just the, the glare from the light. I don't know. Who was it that got seizures here? You? Jennifer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she started foaming and stuff, you know. <laughs> okay, guys. So, this is birch reduction, yes? Yeah. So, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to tell you, the fencing ring is going to be gone. question now is, where does the double bond go? And, and we have here, this is electron what on this card? It's here, yes? This is sp3 hybridized, yes? Electron donated. This is electron withdrawn, yes? And you get one thing or you get the other. When you apply that to this one, which has two of them in the same place. The alkyl group is going to give you what on it? The double bond or not the double bond? The double bond. The double bond. You can think of it as Saisev rule, yes? The double bond with more carbons on it is more stable. Right? That not, has nothing to do with that. What is the question? That's, that's what you're asking? Ah, wow, your hearing is a good Well, you kind of yelled it. <laughs> Guys, this is a question. What's the answer to this? <coughs> okay. All right. I'm going to do it, okay? You guys are having a problem here, a mental situation. Here's an alkyl group. Yes or no? Does it have to have the double bond? Yes or no, this alkyl group? Yes. Yes, yes. it likes to have the double bond. So, you got two choices. Either you put the double bond here, or you put the double bond here, yes or no? Mm -hmm. I can either put it here, yes, that will have the double bond on it, or mm -hmm. I can put it here, that will have the double bond there too, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look, no, this way, no, mm -hmm. this way is not part of the benzene ring. Yeah, it's okay you think, no, but this way, no, either here or here, it has to be inside of the benzene ring. Okay. So. 
How about this one? Does it like the double bond there? Yes or no? No. It does not like the double bond there. It wants to be by itself. So is it going to be here then, the double bond? No. no. The double bond is not going to be there because that one doesn't like it. Oh, okay. So the double bond will go here yeah. because that one likes it. <coughs> and this one wants to be by itself. So if one double bond is there, the other one is going to be where? Be carbon. There. And that's a product. You like that, didn't you? That's how you like it. Nice and hard, huh? <laughs> no, but that's how you like it. Don't you like them really difficult? I mean, the problem, yeah? <laughs> because, you know, they, it makes you feel like you did something good. Watch the video. <laughs> okay, what do you mean you didn't understand the mechanism? What? Let's go home after we do this thing, okay? These are called electrophilic aromatic substitution. Now Sophia's question will be, <laughs> is there something as nucleophilic aromatic substitution, right Sophia? Right. <laughs> and there is. We did. We did the mechanism. I just wanted you to start flowing some juices, okay? <coughs> so, there is electrophilic aromatic substitution, and then there is nucleophilic. nucleophilic. If it is electrophilic, what are we going to have? Car An electrophile that is E plus. plus yeah. Yes? And the benzene ring with a whole bunch of the dual bonds that it has is going to attack this. Okay? Now, this is called electrophilic aromatic substitution. I am going to say electrophilic aromatic bromination. Let's not call it bromination, this. All right, yeah, let's call it bromination. The more the better, right? Yes? Or the bigger the mechanism, the better. <laughs> so here's bromination. For bromination, you are going to need BR2. Mm -hmm. Is this a bromination you did before with BR2? No. What do you mean? So far? So yeah, so far, yeah. So far, yeah. yeah. It looks like BR2 added to an alkene before, yes or no? Mm -hmm. It added to an alkene before. Now it's going to add to this, but not by itself, okay? Because we need this plus in there. This is, this is not going to be through a bromonium ion. Oh, no. okay, okay. This is going to be using it like it so a far. Lewis acid. Oh. Fe. And it will be the same thing as what you're using for bromination, FeBr3. This is a Lewis acid. There are other Lewis acids, <coughs> like AlCl3 or AlBr3. Okay, so you can use here FeBr3 or AlCbr3. Uh, okay, yes or no? Mm -hmm. They're Lewis acids. And what this two things are going to form is the electrophile. The electrophile in this case will be, I'm going to put it in, what is that called? Quotation. It's called quotation? Yeah. Very good. That will give you the electrophile BR plus. Yes? Mm -hmm. So this is now chlorination. <coughs> what do you think chlorination is going to be? CL2. 
C O flows quotation marks. Uh huh. Okay, very nice. What's gonna be here on top of this arrow? C O two. Yeah, CL3. You guys are on fire. <clears throat> Very good. And the product to this will be a bromine here. The product to this will be chlorine. a chlorine there. Yes or no? If I say so, yeah. I don't say so. I read it in some book a long time ago. Uh, Is it going to have the, the whole bond? Inside? Which one? Like the product? Is it going to have the ring with the whole bond? Inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that is, right? You don't like the little circle inside? Yes. Why not? Huh? What did you just realize? <laughs> <laughs> Say it, maybe other people. Oh, you realize that now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah. We cannot let things go, huh? So, let's call this brumination fluorination. I'm going to tell you, fluorination is not good because it is explosive and too fast, you can't control it. Mm -hmm. With an I for ionation, Iodinization, I don't even know what it's called. It's too slow. Okay? So, so most of the time you need copper chloride to make that work. I'm not giving it to you yet because that's not one of these substitutions. Okay, I'll give it to you later. The next one we are going to do is sulfonation. And we are going to have a benzene ring here. <laughs> and I like to give you SO3 and sulfuric acid. It's nasty stuff. That is called the fuming sulfuric acid. Uh, SO3 is a gas. Okay? So the electrophile here is going to be SO3. It's not going to have a positive charge because SO3 looks like this. Okay? Now, so you can tell the sulfur needs what? Sulfur needs what? Negative here, <coughs> negative there, negative there. The sulfur is in some serious need of electrons, yes? So the electrophile is going to be SO3, and the ring is just going to attack that sulfur from the SO3, okay? And sulfonation is going to give you that. Nitration. Guys, I'm getting tired of writing the double bond inside all the time, okay? Now you gotta get used to this. Nitration is nitric acid with sulfuric acid. The nitric acid with the sulfuric acid will create the electrophile NO2 plus. NO2 plus is going to look like this. That's the electrophile. And what is the product going to be? NO2. So bromination, chlorination, sulfonation, nitration. This one is called Friedel Crafts. We did this before? Friedel Crafts Alkylation.
and then Friedel Crafts oscillation will be Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, this was part of making this the electrophile. This was not so much part of that, but it did take apart. That took apart. That took apart. We need another Lewis acid here. The Lewis acid here is stronger, and it's aluminum chloride. Now, iron chloride will not do it. Okay. So, aluminum will do that. One. And what this is going to give you is called Friedel Crafts alkylation. It will put that R group there. The electrophile here will be R plus. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, are we going to have a problem with this R plus? Yeah. What type of problem can we have with this R plus? Whenever we form a carbocation in one of these chains, oh, yeah. it will rearrange. Yeah. Not only will it rearrange, but if it's a primary, it won't it will not want to form a carbocation. Yeah. So the good groups here are secondary and tertiary alkyohalides, okay? Now if I give you a primary, okay, it's for you to know the reaction, but you have to know that primary ones undergo rearrangements a lot of time. Okay? Tertiary and secondary are the best for this. Okay? But if I give you primary, you still give me the same. Next one is Friedel Crafts. Acylation. And a Friedel Crafts acylation is when you use an acyl halide. <coughs> Acyl halide <coughs> is a carbonyl with a halogen on it. That's called an acyl chloride. And again, what do we need? Lewis acid. I mean, I don't know if you notice. Is this an acid? Acid. 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 going to give us that. What do you think the electrophile is going to be? Uh, I see. I see. Plus. If I draw it like that, you won't know. So let's say yeah. that, yes? Mm -hmm. But understand that there will be a resonance structure. Yes. In which this oxygen is going to do what? It's going to give the electron pairs to that and it's going to form triple Yes? Ah, okay. But this is what's going to react anyway. Nice. How do you like that, guys? Love it. Now here's what we're going to do next week. We're going to finish this chapter next week. And we have already done two chapters on Monday. On what day do we meet? Tuesday. Tuesday. On Tuesday we would have finished already two chapters. Okay? You are going to have a test when I finish the next chapter after that. Okay. Okay. Aromatic chapter is gone. And this is electrophilic aromatic substitution. It's heavy. I'm going to finish it on Tuesday. So the exam will be on I want to teach another chapter before I give you a test. But you're already two chapters behind if you haven't done anything yet. This is the first week and you're already two chapters behind. Wait, 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 wait. So this is what's going to happen. Okay? What's going to happen is you put one of these groups on a benzene ring, yes? 
and that will be easy. I'm going to give you some problems on the test. Simple as I give you this and I give you this and ask you to give me the product. That's very simple. But then I'm going to ask you sometimes, once you have this and I do one of those, what do you get? If you have already a group on the benzene ring, you have to know whether the group on the benzene ring is electron releasing or electron withdrawing. And that will direct where your group is going to go. And that's when we are going to do those little, little nice two-page mechanisms, okay? Okay, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Signing off. This is it.